So you either know the Meteor as the brightest flashlight I've ever reviewed, or as the only thing that can save us from 2016. Now coincidentally, it's the only third party vote that takes all the votes away from everyone else equally. So now comes the Olight X7, which can pump out 9,000 lumens or 2,000 lumens more than my Meteor. And you can get it at, that's right, goinggear.com. So let's get to the review. The X7 is a bit bigger and heavier than the Meteor, which is not really a bad thing because the only thing that really dissipates the heat generated by 9,000 lumens is more flashlight. Now, all that light is generated by three Cree XHP 70 cool white tinted emitters. The body is made from aluminum that's covered in a black type 3 anodization, has a glass lens, and a triclops orange peel reflector, and it runs off of four high drain 18650 batteries in a two series, two parallel configuration. Now, I use some 3500 milliamp hour high drains for all my tests. I'll link them in the description. Anyway, the light comes in a nice gift style box with instructions and a nylon holster. You're like, where's, where's the lanyard, man? Well, we're living in strange times. So let's go over the six constant output modes that have no visible PWM on any of them. You're like, what about strobe? Oh yeah, there's, there's one of those two. So I guess seven modes. Now my estimated output figures and low lights specs are on screen. First is nightlight mode, which is lower than on my meteor. It's about half as bright, which is good. That's good. Lower lows are always better. Then is low. Then is medium. Then you get high, <laughs> which uh, steps down in Olight specs. Um, then there's turbo, which also steps down after a few minutes. Um, then turbo S, which steps down only after two and a half minutes because it's 9,000 lumens, which it should, or it would self-destruct. And yes, all flashlights that put out this much light step down, unless it's like some big industrial you know, thing mounted on a black ops helicopter. You're like, why would a black ops helicopter have a bright light? And that, folks, is why I don't do improv. And yes, all flashlights that put out this much light step down. Even lights that put out a thousand lumens usually step down. And by my count, this is the fourth most powerful production light there is. There's the 15,000 lumen 4.7s, the 10,000 lumen Ace Beam, a 9600 lumen Mech Army, but all are more expensive. Anyway, the X7 is brighter currently than any light at Phoenix, Night Corps, Through Night, Noctagon, Army Tech, Zebra Light, or Surefire. So keep that in mind. And it retails for only $200, which makes it much more affordable than a lot of the other big lumen light offerings at those other companies, which all again produce less lumens. Remember, other than the Ace Beam. Seriously, go look. I'm waiting. And as always, there are custom lights that are brighter, like from Vin or Mountain Electronics sells like a modified one. But we're talking about production flashlights from major manufacturers. So how about that UI? First, it needs batteries. Screw on the tail clap, which I'll admit is a little hard to do in the dark. It has two pins that go in holes, and if you start getting resistance in a turn or two, remove it and realign it. The threads are square cut-ish and anodized, so they should last a long time. Also, you can't get it to mechanically lock out easy. The tail cap needs to be unscrewed nearly all the way to cut the voltage inside the light, so it's not really that great of an option for a mechanical lockout. It does have an electronic switch, so remove the batteries if you're storing it for extended periods of time, like months without use. Or you can use the electronic lockout mode. Just press and hold the side switch, it goes into moonlight, or I guess nightlight mode, then shuts off. So then it's harder to activate in your purse. So when you press and hold the switch, it comes on in moonlight, or I'm sorry, nightlight briefly, until you unlock it. It's like a momentary one, which I don't really think has a practical use. Anyway, by pressing and holding, you can wait for the moonlight to blink, then it's unlocked again. So, first, let's get strobe out of the way, man, right? Triple click, wow, it blinks. It's a pretty bright blink though. Click it again to get rid of it. You can access it from off or on. So maybe the world is a little bit better. All right, the Marauder has mode memory on all but its two highest modes. It has four regular modes that are all saved into memory when the light is turned off. A click turns the light on or off. It comes on in whatever you use last. Okay, so nightlight is also a direct access shortcut mode that you can get to by pressing and holding the side switch. Release it after it turns on, otherwise you'll lock it out, like I described above. 
Anyway, after releasing it, you can press and hold to get to the other three regular brightness levels like low, mid, high, then it loops over again. It won't go back into nightlight mode though. You can always get to nightlight mode again by turning it off and pressing and holding to access it. So to access the two turbo modes, the reason why you're interested in this light, or maybe my voice puts you to sleep and that's why you're watching this video. Fair enough, I can understand, it's a flashlight video, Jesus. So 5,000 lumen turbo and 9,000 lumen turbo S modes are activated by a double click from any time off or on. You always get to turbo first, then double click a second time to get to turbo S, which is like the 9,000 lumen mode. You always have to go through turbo before getting to turbo S, which is really how it should be as a safety feature. You can toggle between these two unreasonable modes by double clicking, or you can press and hold to get back into the regular three mode loop of low, mid, and high, then it continues looping over and over again. Now, if you turn the light off in turbo or turbo S mode, it'll come back on in high. The manual says it should come back on in one of the turbo modes, but I found mine unit didn't do that. So other than the ACE beam control ring, this setup is a pretty good UI. It's definitely more user friendly than my Meteor, which I often forget how to get to all the modes. This one, it's pretty easy. Once you practice it with it for a few minutes, you'll have it down. But I still do love my Meteor, the design and compactness of that light. It's pretty, pretty cool. You're like, it's a flashlight, dude. Why are you watching this channel then? How about them thar run times? I did all of the modes except night light mode because what else am I gonna do with all my time? I used 3,500 milliamp hour hydrogen batteries for this test. First is Turbo S, you get about two and a half minutes of the 9,000-ish lumens of Turbo S before it steps down to 2,600 lumens and runs pretty steadily until two hours and 10 minutes where it steps down and runs lower briefly and cuts off at about two hours and 30 minutes. Ending voltage on all of my runtime tests was about 2.8 volts per battery. I used on protected cells, so the light has built-in protection. Now anything below 2.5 volts is kind of considered unsafe in lithium ion batteries, but they never got that low in this light. You can use protected hydrogen cells in this light too. Only button top cells work. Flat top cells will not work in this light. Then there's turbo. I measured about 5,700 lumens, but it runs pretty solidly for 10 minutes before stepping down to 1800-ish lumens. Olight says a step down is at eight minutes, so somewhere in there. Then it runs pretty continuously for a total of three hours and 39 minutes before shutting down. I'm pretty happy with these run times and it means it's a practical light that also puts out an impractical amount of light. It's like an oxymoron. Well, not really. How about high mode? High mode runs pretty continuously for a long time. There's a barely perceptible drop in brightness that's hard to see, but it is there. It hits a hard drop in brightness at a little over one hour and 50 minutes in and cuts off at about two hours and 58 minutes. The reason high doesn't run quite as long as turbo S mode is because it has a higher level of sustained brightness for a longer period of time. The other one steps down earlier in. Now mid, mid runs for seven hours and 57 minutes of sustained brightness of around a thousand ish lumens. You can see the red warning light blink before the battery runs out telling you to recharge the batteries. It doesn't say anything in the manual about that red blinking light or anywhere in the documentation, but it's there. It looks like it's a low voltage warning light and it blinks whenever it's getting close to running out. Now low, which is a few hundred lumens of sustained brightness for over a full 24 hours of runtime, provided it's the only mode you use it in. You get a full 26 hours and 11 minutes of runtime, or at least I did, using different batteries and in different temperatures, ambient room temperatures, and using other modes will affect run times in different ways. But you knew that, right? Okay, so now we're at the beam shot section. Here are the lights I'll be comparing the X72. All our lights have put out over 2,000 lumens. But one that puts out only about 1,000 lumens, just to show you some context. A lot of people have 1,000 lumen lights now, which is sort of standard for everyday carry lights, which is why I put it there. All lights are set to their maximum output. First is the 989 lumens Sunway Man D48, the only light I haven't reviewed in this lineup. I have it, I like it, but I don't know, I got it a long time ago. The candela rating is about the same as the X7, which is what you're seeing now. First with 5000 lumen mode, which is pretty insane in itself, presumably because it's been watching CNN's election coverage. Then the 9000 lumen mode, which is Turbo S, 
it's really impressive. It lights up the whole tree canopy. It's not a throw light, but it still travels quite a bit of distance. The light dissipates as the distance increases, but we'll stick with 9000 lumen mode from here on out because this is a comparison of the maximum outputs of big lumen lights. Now the Noctagon Meteor. This isn't the exact same model that I reviewed over a year ago that has basically carried this entire channel with over a third of the channel's views. It had to have been some sort of accident. It has a different tint and emitters. It's also a throwier light in the X7. These are my updated Meteor readings, by the way. I was using the manufacturer spec for the longest time, so I finally measured it. Anyway, you'll notice at first it looks brighter than the X7 to the eye, but there isn't much of a brightness difference visibly between 7200 and 9200 lumens to our eyes. That's because it's a slightly more focused beam pattern, so things near the center will look brighter at further distances. But if you look around the edges, the X7 lights up more area, and my camera lens I'm using could be wider too, but I ain't got the money for a thousand dollar lens that I would really like to have. Anyway, next is the Olight Seeker, which I reviewed a month ago or two now. Now normally a 2,500 lumen light is pretty awesome, but hey, it's no 9,000 lumen light. It's also floody, but nowhere near 9,000 lumens, like it's Big Brother or the X7. Then the 4,000 lumen Nikkor TM16GT, also a cool white light. It's also much throwier than the X7, but the X7 is a much brighter overall light. And it won't travel as far as the Nikkor's beam distance, but it's brighter closer. So now my throwiest light, the Ace Beam K70, which looks like a pinpoint compared to everything else here. Much less overall light, but the beam travels much further than all my other lights. So that's my throwiest light, and this is my brightest, floodiest light. It's also just my brightest overall light, the X7. That light's also a lot bigger than the X7. It needs a big reflector to throw. Back to the X7. Okay, just for comparison, now the Convoy L6, which is a little over 3,000 lumens. Also, uh, I want to say the most affordable light in this whole mix-up at um, 60 bucks. It's throwier than the X7, but not like the Nikkor or the Ace Beam. The tin is a bit more neutral than cool on this light. Okay, you're not going to find a more affordable light that puts out as many lumens. You're like, it's $200, man. There is no other light that comes close to this output for $200 bucks from any manufacturer. It just, trust me on this. It's, it, it's not going to happen. You're not going to find one. So it does require hydrogen batteries. So make sure you have high quality cells like goinggear.com cells who provided this light for review. And let me stress, if you do use unprotected cells in this light, only use match cells that are high drain. Match batteries are all the same brand capacity and purchased at the same time and charged at the same time to the same voltage. Never use different branded cheap or non-high drain batteries in powerful lights like this. It's stupid. Again, there's a link in the description. If you're not sure, make sure you buy four and use them only in this light. And if you need more, grab another set of four. I also like that the light doesn't use a separate battery carrier, which means more aluminum and more mass to dissipate heat and one less thing to rattle around on the inside. Also, the light has thermal regulation built in to keep it from getting too hot to hold. It still gets pretty warm and, you know, maybe a little more comfortable with gloves in colder weather. I'd like it if Olight offered a lot more neutral tints as options. They don't seem to like neutral tints. I don't know why. Now, neutral tints often put out less lumens than their cooler white counterparts, which that may have something to do with it because this one's trying to, you know, sell you 9,000 lumens. And then maybe one more sub 100 lumen mode. I don't know, like a 70, but then it starts getting too many modes. It's definitely a great light and affordable for what it does. And I prefer this UI to the one on my Meteor because I know how to get to everything and I don't forget about what button to press to get to where. I think if there's also a three night available in the 7,000 luminous range, so I think it costs more. And one other thing to note, because this review isn't quite long enough, mode memory and high will revert back to medium after 10-ish minutes of being off. So either double click from off to get directly into a turbo, or after turning it on, press and hold for a second to get back to high. Congratulations, you sat through my second longest review ever. That's 15 minutes you won't get back. If you like this review, buy the light at goinggear.com. Through the link in the description below. Also give the review a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel for the most thorough flashlight reviews on YouTube. Seriously, look around. Thanks for watching.